Meet the spoiled sisters, who were given the keys to a hotel by their generous father. Just because we dress nice doesn't mean we're spoiled. They are definitely a little bit spoiled. The problem is, these two siblings prioritize their own lifestyles over the comfort of their guests, leaving the once thriving establishment in chaos, all the while blaming the staff for the problems. They don't have ownership of this historic building. I their what... daddy's not paying for everything. This was one of the most unforgettable episodes of Hotel Hell due to the sisters' amusing yet frustrating attempts at hotel management. I thought Gordon was going to be nice to me. What unfolded during the show was captivating, but it's what transpired afterward that truly takes the story to a whole new level of intrigue. In Pipestone, Minnesota, a historic gem awaits, the Calumet Inn. A grand establishment built in 1888, it was originally designed to cater to the rail passengers of its time. It stood as a symbol of elegance and comfort for travelers for decades. Yet, as the years passed, the golden age of rail travel dimmed, and the hotel fell into a state of disrepair. The Calumet found new ownership in the form of Jim Smirkovsky, who saw it as a gift for his two daughters, Fonda and Rena, to manage. These sisters, despite their lack of experience in the hospitality industry, believed they held all the answers. Vonda's daily routine was a shocker, as she wouldn't rise from her bed until well past 3 p.m. She also held a pretty cynical view of the staff, thinking they were motivated solely by money and lacked any loyalty. To make matters worse, they stripped the once authoritative general manager, Mandy Thompson, of her managerial duties, assigning her to a simple waitress and front desk role. Under the misguided leadership of the sisters and a lack of guests, the hotel's fortunes took a nosedive. Things got so dire that their parents had no choice but to move in and join forces with their daughters in a desperate attempt to salvage the struggling hotel. Gordon Ramsay's arrival at the hotel took an unexpected turn as he found himself puzzled by the entrance. It resembled more of a service door than a proper hotel entrance, giving him the impression of walking into a prison. As he ventured further, the entrance passageway was equally dark and eerily empty, adding to the unsettling atmosphere Gordon finally reached the deserted front desk and called out for assistance. Mandy, the lone presence in the hotel at that time, rushed to meet him and offered her apologies for the bleak welcome. Gordon then met with the two sisters. They wasted no time in expressing their dissatisfaction with Mandy's performance, arguing that she didn't meet their standards, which had led to her reassignment to waiting and front desk duties. Gordon was then shown to his hotel room, which he had been checked into. However, what he found inside was far from welcoming. The room housed a moldy refrigerator and a wardrobe that had seen better days. Vonda revealed her wide range of responsibilities, which included bookkeeping, front desk duties, and occasional work in the dining room. Rena, on the other hand, admitted to being uncertain about her role in the hotel. Intrigued, Gordon asked the sisters if they stayed overnight at the hotel before purchasing it. They confessed to spending only a single night prior to the purchase. Rena then led Gordon to the room she had stayed in, claiming it as her favorite. To his dismay, Gordon discovered that the room was in a deplorable state, even worse than his own. When Gordon probed for the root causes of the hotel's problems, the sisters pointed fingers at the staff, citing unprofessionalism, rudeness, and constant complaints as the main culprits behind the hotel's downfall. After inspecting the hotel, Gordon decides to have lunch at the restaurant. Jocelyn, a two-year staff member, takes care of him. The menu is extensive, but the kitchen is understaffed with just two head chefs. Gordon orders the soup of the day and a fish dish to sample. I think the food sucks. He spots Mandy running around, and she bluntly tells him she's no longer the general manager, a decision that's clearly gotten on her nerves. She doesn't hold back when asked about her opinion of the sisters. Vanda is borderline sociopath. Um, the other one, I don't know. I can't describe her. She's never here. A sociopath and an absentee partner? Uh, great. Hopefully Gordon's food will be good. When Gordon dives into his meal, the reality is harsh. The soup has a burnt taste to it, and the fish is as hard as a brick. With a bad taste in his mouth, Gordon assembles the staff for a no-nonsense chat about the hotel's problems. The chef vents her frustrations in straightforward terms, slamming the owners for making her job a nightmare. Rena and Vonda respond with a defiant attitude, blaming the staff's behaviors for the hotel's woes. Upon hearing of Gordon's arrival, hotel guests start checking in. Pretty soon, the complaints start to flood in, 
from room conditions to the food, service, and the inadequacy of the staff. Gordon goes searching for the owners. He finds Rena hiding in her room. Inside, she is on the bed crying, with her mother, Rita, by her side. Rita explains that her daughter tends to flee when faced with challenges in life. Following that, Gordon meets again with Mandy, where he unearths the grim reality of the failing hotel situation. As the restaurant closes up for the evening, Gordon gathers all the staff after a long day of work. This would be the first time the staff has had a meeting together since the daughter's assumed ownership. Mandy blames the lack of communication between the staff and the owners as a major reason for the business's downfall. Tensions reach a boiling point as the sisters retaliate by accusing Mandy of being less than committed. Mandy, incensed by their remarks, passionately defends herself, highlighting her exhausting 60-hour work weeks while raising two children. She then abruptly exits the meeting, clearly fed up with the sister's attitude. Gordon has a straightforward conversation with the owners alone, emphasizing that Mandy has been the backbone of the hotel's success. He urges them to step up or think about selling or closing the hotel. The next day, Gordon, in his recognizable blue speedo and robe, plans to hit the gym. But there's a catch. The hotel doesn't have a gym. So he's humorously told to walk down the street in his robe to find one. That would have been pretty funny seeing Gordon walk down the street in his speedo. Since he can't get a workout in, Gordon meets next with past guests who share their complaints about the subpar rooms. One guest with allergies says her room is dusty and making her feel sick. When he talks to the sisters about it, all he gets is excuses. Gordon challenges Rena by asking her this. Tell me one thing that you've accomplished in your life, on your own. Good question. What has she accomplished? I worked when I was 14 at a fast food place. Hmm, really? Well, that's it? Are you serious? You want me to get impressed with that? No, I, no but I'm just saying. After that somewhat painful encounter with the sisters, Gordon realizes he has to get Mandy back. He visits her at her home, and they have a discussion in her backyard. He praises her skills and asks if she'd consider coming back in a more significant role. Mandy isn't sure, but agrees to think about it. Back at the hotel, a delicious smell leads Gordon to Rita's room, where he discovers her cooking talents for Thai cuisine. Rita mentions that she's been cooking seven days a week without a break. In a family meeting, the Smirkovsky family shares their doubts about running the hotel. Gordon advises them to either hire a good manager, think about selling the hotel, or consider closing it altogether. In a staff meeting, the sisters announce their plan to step back and introduce a new general manager. To everyone's surprise, Mandy returns as the new general manager to run the hotel. The following day, Gordon unveils the impressive makeover, and the guest rooms have been transformed into vibrant, airy spaces. The newly designed rooms boast new mattresses, cushions, fresh linens, and upgraded bedding. The addition of proper wardrobes enhances the room's functionality. Gordon also reveals a newly revamped gym, something that was sorely lacking before, and a brand new restaurant featuring Thai recipes based on Rita's cooking which receive enthusiastic approval from the staff. With a newfound sense of enthusiasm, the staff eagerly anticipates welcoming guests to the rejuvenated hotel. However, on the relaunch night, the sisters can't resist meddling in the affairs and start to revert to their old ways. Seeing that, Gordon steps in and firmly instructs them to pack their bags and leave the hotel. This has to be one of the first times I've seen Gordon tell the owners to leave an establishment at the end of the episode. Before parting ways, Gordon hands them a goldfish to take care of, a gesture meant to demonstrate responsibility. In their concluding words, the sisters outline their future plans. Continue onwards into my 30s. A happy person, not miserable. And as for Rena, this is her vision of the future. I'm going back to Minneapolis, but I'm really excited to feel free to let out my creativity and show the world what I'm capable of. The original episode, filmed in May 2013, ends as a taxi arrives to pick up the two sisters to take them off to their new life. In the aftermath of the filming of the episode, things took an interesting turn. The high note on which the episode concluded didn't last for Mandy as a general manager. She quickly found herself out of that role once again. Rena, on the other hand, achieved her wish and relocated back to Minneapolis. 
This meant that Vonda was back in the position of general manager all by herself. It is quite evident from Vonda's own words that her appearance on Hotel Hell was primarily a publicity stunt for the Calumet Inn's owner. In a heartfelt letter posted on the Inn's Facebook page back in 2014, Vonda herself admitted her true intentions. She revealed that the reason she agreed to be on the show was to put both the Calumet Inn and the town of Pipestone on the national map, as she put it. She openly declared that she was willing to go to great lengths to achieve this, stating that she opened her mind and heart to getting publicity at any cost. Vonda's determination to grab America's attention like snake charmers, as she put it in her own words, led her to embrace a new opportunity. Soon after the Hotel Hell crew had finished filming their episode, Vonda didn't hesitate to sign up for another reality TV venture. This time, it was with the Travel Channel's Resort Rescue. The Bartender Breakdown episode of Resort Rescue, featuring the Calumet Inn as a struggling business in need of rescue, commenced filming in July 2014, a month before the Hotel Hell episode had its official premiere. This show is hosted by the New Zealander Shane Green and takes a unique format, blending elements from Hotel Hell with Undercover Boss. Unlike Chef Ramsay's high-level hotel reviews, Resort Rescue had Vonda and Shane closely observing their employees on camera while they worked. The focus shifted towards addressing the tension between the bartenders and their rudeness to customers. It aimed to improve the employees rather than providing a broad evaluation of the hotel as a whole, making it a distinctive alternative to Ramsay's grand vision for the hotel. Vonda would later say that filming for this show was nowhere near lowbrow as Hotel Hell. As mentioned, the Resort Rescue episode was filmed one month before the Hotel Hell episode aired. Just a few days before the Hotel episode was set to air, Vonda took to her now-deleted blog, The Vandalized Smirk, to share her thoughts. In a post titled, Life Lessons and Confessions from the Little Hotel on the Prairie, she delved into a rather lengthy explanation of her journey to the hotel and the circumstances surrounding the filming of Hotel Hell. In her candid account, she boldly asserted that Gordon screwed up and went as far as suggesting that all the hotel's issues were fabricated, merely a theatrical performance for the camera. She also complained about the new menu changes Chef Ramsay made, saying that $21 chicken and braised kale will cause small-town business suicide. Furthermore, Vonda did not hold back in her critique of the Thai menu, describing it as tasting like mush and deeming it a disgrace to authentic Thai cuisine. The sisters moved to sell the business not long after their reality television fame started fading, less than a year after both episodes aired. On her blog, Vonda expressed a desire to return to her main passion in life, traveling. Her goal was to sell the hotel before she turned 30, so she could do this. Her wish would come true. In mid-2015, less than a year after the episodes aired, the Smirkowski family sold the hotel to a group of men from Texas who ran a hotel management company for $800,000 on a deed. A deed is an agreement for the sale of a property where the buyer takes possession while making payments but the seller holds title until full payment is received. Vonda said she would be free to get back to what she loved, travel. She posted on the Inn's Facebook page that she was planning on spending time volunteering at a Syrian refugee camp in Greece. On her blog, she wrote of the experience. There, she met Mohanet, a 19-year-old Iraqi with dreams of moving to Germany. While Vonda was enjoying life abroad, things were not going well back at the Calumet. In spite of their extensive background in the hotel industry, the recent purchasers found it difficult to generate the necessary cash flow to sustain the business. To make matters worse, during this period, the hotel began encountering issues with its exterior wall. Constructed from pink jasper quartzite stones, certain sections of the wall began to deteriorate, prompting the city to identify it as a safety hazard in need of repair. Notably, each of these stones weighs up to 100 pounds each posing a potential risk to pedestrians. In the end, the deal with the Texas men fell apart, and the Smirkowski family regained control of the hotel. After the initial attempts to sell the business failed, the Smirkowski sisters struck a deal with the Calumet Inn's general manager at the time and local artist, Tammy Grubbs. Once the hotel was back in their hands, they sold it to Grubbs for $500,000. However, their hopes were short-lived, as the Calumet Inn was soon condemned by the city of Pipestone due to fire safety concerns. Despite Tammy and the support of local patrons, their efforts to reverse the decision proved futile. 
Tammy took to Facebook in May of 2022 to announce the indefinite closure of the Calumet Inn, saying, we hope that this is temporary, but the doors haven't reopened since. The legal battle between Tammy, Vonda, and the city of Pipestone remains unresolved. In November 2022, Vonda and Tommy Grubbs decided to sue the city of Pipestone over the hotel's shutdown. A settlement conference is scheduled to take place in December 2023 to determine whether the inn's condemnation violated their 14th and 5th Amendment rights, as well as whether they are entitled to monetary damages exceeding $75,000. If the matter remains unresolved at that date, the case is expected to proceed to trial as early as April 2024. Now let's dive into what happened to the individuals featured in this episode. As for Mandy Thompson, after her time at the Troubled Hotel during the filming of Hotel Hell, she made a transition and began working at a company called Pipestone System, a cooperative of hog razors. Regrettably, there isn't much additional information about her online. Nevertheless, we can only hope that she's thriving and doing well. Her strong work ethic certainly left an impression. As for Rena, she made the decision to leave the hotel and return to Minneapolis. She embarked on a new journey by joining Arthur's Senior Care as a residential staff care member. It appears that this role is a perfect fit for her, as she achieved the remarkable honor of being awarded Staff of the Year in the prestigious Top 10 of all of Arthur's staff. You can catch a glimpse of her discussing her job in a video from 2015 on the company's Facebook page. I have limited information about Rena, but I can share that she tied the knot with a gentleman named Tom Jensen. I hope she is happy these days. Now, let's shift our focus to Vonda. As mentioned earlier, she still maintains a connection to the hotel, technically remaining the owner on paper due to the financing arrangement for the purchase. Until the financial obligations are settled, she retains this ownership status. In her personal life, she discovered love and met her future husband on OkCupid back in 2018. After four years of a committed relationship, they took the leap and got married in 2022. You might notice that she now goes by the name Vonda Meraki on Facebook, even though her husband's name is Siddhartha Chatterjee, which leaves us curious about the origin of the Meraki name. This couple is currently residing in the sunny city of Palm Springs, California, and their love story continues to unfold. Vonda keeps an active and public Facebook profile that she updates regularly. The hotel still remains closed to this day. As for the goldfish, its fate remains a mystery. Let's just say it probably didn't break any records for longevity.